so excited to do this video. I'm going to be sharing with you my go-to everyday ish makeup routine for 2023 now i've talked about this before but i definitely don't wear the same makeup every single day with testing products as my job but i pulled my current absolute favorites the ones that are the truth tried and true i love them i know my makeup's gonna look flawless and i'm also incorporating some of my current favorite techniques that i'm doing so this is my go-to style of makeup type of look for 2023 so this is the first makeup look no it's not so this is my first makeup routine video for 2023 all of these products are definitely what i recommend but first let's get into skincare because as you know skincare is what's gonna make your makeup look good right your skincare is way more important than your makeup so thank you to phyla for sponsoring today's video i'm going to highlight the three-step skincare routine I've been doing the last couple of months that have kept my skin clear. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you've seen I've been through a lot when it comes to acne. So if you have acne-prone skin, I highly recommend this routine. It's for all types of acne, hormonal, dietary, chin and cheek, stubborn acne. Here's a photo of me just two months ago. My skin was totally swollen and inflamed. My skin gets very irritated very easily with different makeup products and skincare products. So I'm really particular about what skincare product I recommend to you guys because my skin is so sensitive. And I've used a lot of acne systems in the past that have worked for me, but they have dried my skin out terribly. So this I think is what makes Phyla very special for me to recommend to you guys is that it keeps my skin super soft and supple and hydrated. And then for those of you who also have really sensitive skin, I find this one to be very gentle. So it's only three steps. Simplicity is best. So let me show you what I use. I start off with the gel cleanser. It's non-foaming, fragrance-free, and it's going to gently exfoliate your skin and it's going to open up the pores for what I call the money maker in this system. This is what is going to help with your acne the most. This is the Fortify Probiotic Serum. So the probiotics in here are going to work to kill only the acne causing bacteria, but still allows the good bacteria in your skin to flourish and build a resilient microbiome. This is what makes the probiotic formula in here so unique. So use this, love this, this is magical. And then finally, to kind of seal in the hydration, the fluff moisturizer, you guys. It's designed to keep the phages alive, and it's incredibly light and hydrating. That's why they call it fluff. And so if you find that other acne skincare items you've used in the past have dried you out, your skin's gonna just feel really hydrated after this. It makes it so special. This is the biggest acne breakthrough in 40 years. It's going to clear your acne in 60 days. And there is a 60-day risk-free guarantee. If you try it and you don't like it, you can return it. Don't worry. And the proof is in the pudding, you guys. My skin doesn't lie. When it doesn't like something, you'll see it. <laughs> so you can see my skin really enjoys this routine. So Philo was really kind to give me a discount code. If you use code MORGAN25, it will save you 25% off all orders, which is huge. And this offer is just for January and February. So if you want to try a new, gentle, still hydrating, acne-approved routine, I love this one a lot. So thank you, Phyla, for working with me on this. Now that my skin is beautiful and hydrated, Let's get into the makeup. I am so stoked about putting all of these products on my face today because they all are so amazing. So for primer, there's a number of primers that I love, obviously, but one product that has snuck into my everyday makeup routine, always wanna grab it type situation, is the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. This is stunning. She's spency, very spency, but so good on the skin. So it looks like this, and I find that it is hydrating and smoothing on the skin and also soothing. So if your skin is feeling irritated or whatever, like I said, I have really sensitive skin, so it can easily feel irritated. You know, if I do a couple looks in one day for my videos, I find that this primer really soothes that feeling. So it's great for sensitive skin. It's great for dry skin, it's great for porous skin. I feel like for me, this is kind of a do-it-all primer. I tried this about halfway into last year and I've been in love with it since, so it's definitely kind of weaseled its way 
into my everyday routine. It's the perfect base for makeup. Now for foundation, I just can't stop my love affair with the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. This was the best foundation that launched in 2022. It makes my skin look perfect and soft, so I had to use this for today. Looks like this. I just realized that I'm doing an Hourglass Primer and foundation, go off hourglass. The shade's a little deep for me. I've lost my tan. When I went home to Maryland, I definitely lost my tan. This used to match me, so let's pretend that it does. But I like to use my finger to spread out the product. I find this gives not only the most even coverage, but it also wastes the least amount of product. It really is gonna help whatever you're using as your blender out. We'll start off with this. I'll probably add a little bit more, but I wanted to share this. This is going to go in my January favorites, but this Juvia's Play Sponge is so good. It's so soft, and there's like a more dense side on one side if you want to really get full coverage, or sometimes I'll use it to press on powders, and then the soft side is as soft as a beauty blender. It is such a good sponge, and it's giant as well so you cover a lot of surface area with this as well this foundation has a soft matte finish but can you see just how smooth and soft my skin looks i think that's my favorite part about this foundation is how soft it makes my skin look i'm just gonna do a little extra in the areas that i feel i could use a little bit more coverage which is, you know, exposing myself for the lack of color match, but I needed to use this formula. You needed to know that it's still thebomb.com. And I'm gonna show you, if you have a foundation that matches you horribly, how to help it. Not solve it, but help it. Stunning, I'm gonna go ahead already into eyebrows. This is just like the way I like to do it. I have fallen back in love with an eyebrow pencil that I loved for a long time. Then, you know, I got distracted by all the new pretty shiny objects. But I'm back on the Isom Brow Defining Pencil. This is one of the best eyebrow pencils on the market. Isom is a smaller brand, but great products, especially this guy. I'm gonna brush my brow hairs up first. I've been doing my brows the same way for months, so this is nothing new. And by the way, I don't think I clarified this, but this is my kind of everyday-ish makeup routine. It's not natural. If you're looking for like everyday friendly natural routine, this is not it. I don't do that kind of look very often. On the everyday, I'm, I'm glam. I can't help it. Makeup is so fun for me to put on. It's like my therapy. It's my me time. We always go glam. <laughs> and then I'm gonna brush down. And you can see how my arch area is just naturally very sparse. So we're gonna just draw that in and pretend like I was born this way. And then use hair like strokes to kind of fill that in. Flip over, spoolie side, brush her back up. If she's looking a little messy, like especially along the bottom, I'll show you what we're gonna do and how to fix it. But now I'm just gonna do kind of a final once over see if there's any sparse areas that I would like to fill in. That'll do it for now. We're going into the best eyebrow gel I've ever used. This is the Too Faced Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax. Okay, okay, so the truth to the matter is, this could be too heavy, too intense for you, but if you like an intense hold, because I find my eyebrows hairs, that they just don't like me, they don't listen to me. This is the one that makes them very obedient and it gives a true thickening kind of look to the eyebrow if you like the laminated look without wanting to get your brows laminated this will give it to you like look at this and if I wanted to my eyebrows would stay looking like this but I do like to tame them down a little bit like I like a semi laminated look nowadays I used to hate this kind of look, but it, it did grow on me. I do feel like this makes my brows look a little thicker. Now, if you feel like this was too intense for you, uh, a great one that works similar but is not as 
intense <laughs> is the Bay Brow Clear Brow Gel. This gives a similar look, but it's a little bit lighter, just FYI. Um, and then the final step to perfect the brows, it takes a village, y'all, is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in Boundless Bisque. You can also just use concealer or your foundation to do this, but sometimes I just feel like that's too much work. I like this pencil because it makes it easier. So all I'm gonna do is just highlight right underneath. It's focusing on my ear right now. There we go. And it's just going to create some light underneath here. And then we're gonna take a small brush. Just gonna use this one right here with synthetic hairs. And I'm gonna kind of blend it out, make it look more natural, shape the brows, just like that. And then the brows are clean and ready to go for today. I'm already getting into eyeshadow because that's just the order of the way that I do things. So we're gonna use the Kaleidos Tone Activator. This is my all-time favorite eye primer. It gives a little bit of color to the eyelid. It still is really light, it's perfect for eyeshadow. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on my eyelids, not too much. Then we're gonna blend it out. But you see how this just gives a little bit of coverage, but it's not too much, but it still just makes the eyelid look clean enough. Then I'm gonna go into my sponge to just press her in. Okay, eyeshadow, it was a really tough decision to decide what I wanted to do for eyeshadow because did I wanna pick my all-time favorite palette? Did I wanna pick one of my current favorites? So I decided to go with a current favorite, which is one that I didn't get to demo for you guys on camera and I really wanted to. So this is the Viseart Petit Fours or Petty Fours in Amelie and look at this. It's so boring, but it's so good, you guys. I had to show you it. And I'm also going to add a few additional colors just for my everyday kind of look, which is going to be with the Vizzy Art Neutral Mats. Now, they sell this in a different style or size that makes it a lot more affordable than this particular size. But this is the perfect eyeshadow palette to have by your side if you're ever in need of a specific kind of neutral matte. So I'm going to use these two today. They're tried and trues. Love busy art. And normally I don't go so warm with eyeshadows for like my ideal kind of look, but I've been into it lately. So I'm going to start off with this shade right here, and I'm using a good old MAC 224. And I'm going to start off by circling the color in the outer half of the eyelid just like this, and then with whatever is left, then we go in. But I want most of the depth to be out here. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the same brush for going into the darker shade. And I'm gonna focus it just in the outer part of the eyelid. I'm not really gonna blend it in at all. Just like that. With a BK Beauty 211, I'm pulling the matte Viseart palette out. We're going into this dark brown. And for my eye shape, I find kind of a winged out look is the most flattering. So I start off by pressing the darkest color right here in the outer corner. And then with whatever's left on my brush, I start to kind of haze it out and blend it out. That's what we're going to do. Slowly but surely, and you'll see that the Viseart quality is just putting in the work. AKA, I hardly had to do anything to get a really soft look. So if you're looking for some tried and true mattes, you really cannot go wrong with Viseart. This is why they're professional favorites. Not enough people use them because they're so good. So I'm going to, again, press and then blend. And then I'm going to use my blender brush and I'm going into just this bone colored shade and I'm going to use it to buff out the edges of my eyeshadow and also to kind of highlight under the brow. I think it makes the look very clean. I mean, in this video, guys, I'm sharing with you my favorite makeup tricks and strategies that I use to get a look that I love. And we're back at it. I'm gonna go into this dark shade right here. So what makes this palette so special from Viseart is while I was waxing poetic about their mattes, I've 
thought they've always had decent shimmers, but nothing to write home about, you know? Nothing can be Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona. But this palette came out and it has the best shimmers that Vizzy Art has ever come out with. Look at this. Absolutely amazing. I almost gave this palette away to somebody when I got it in the mail. I was like, I don't know if I want to keep it. I don't need it. Boy, that would have been a mistake because this is one of my all-time favorite quads from Busy Art now. Now we're going into this light peach shade. I didn't think the color story was very unique. I thought it was repetitive. And then I put it on my eyes. And okay, I'm not going to say it's unique, but stunning and the quality is top notch. Like, look at that. These shimmers are insane. Absolutely insane. I'm just going to go back in with a blending brush just to make sure everything is softened. Look how beautiful that looks, you guys. Okay, so now that the eyeshadow is done, we're going to use a makeup wipe. And I'm going to clean up any fallout that might have occurred, which not much, but I don't want any shimmer particles to blend in. Sorry, this is annoying. I don't want any shimmer particles to blend in with the concealer. Now, the concealer that we're using today is a brand new one that I've been loving. This is a full coverage concealer. I wanted to do glam today, so that's what we're doing with the Urban Decay Naked Quickie Concealer. I'd never tried an Urban Decay concealer before. I know the Naked was popular before this, but they killed it with this one. I'm using the shade 40NN. And I'm going to put some right in the inner corner out here. And I'm going to put some down here because I like a brightish look because our foundation is too dark. Well, my foundation is too dark. You probably have a good shade match. <laughs> but if you don't watch this, put a light concealer down here because part of what makes your foundation, like, it very easy to tell that it's not your color is this between this, like the difference. So if you put a lighter concealer, if your foundation's too dark, it's going to help not really show the contrast. So I'm gonna use my new favorite Juvia's Place sponge, and we're gonna blend out this light concealer. Like you see how much better this looks because I brightened under there. So while I would suggest you purchase the correct foundation shade, right? Things happen, you know. <laughs> if you can't, do something like this with the lighter concealer, and that's really going to help. And then I'm going to blend this guy out. Now, the Urban Decay Concealer does come with a brush, but it's just really stiff and honestly kind of painful to apply. And they said you can wet the brush if you want it to be softer, but I don't want to have to wet the brush. I don't have time to get up and wet it, so we're just using my sponge. And it is a little bit on the brighter side for me. Normally, I don't care for my concealer to be super bright. But this is just the shade that I had. But you can see, even though it's a brightening shade because it has so much coverage, it doesn't emphasize any blue still. So I really love how glam this is making us look. I keep saying us as if you guys are using the exact same products I'm using. But you know what I mean. We look good. This is awesome. Now for powder, I'm going to hold off. Let's do cream bronzer first. So cream bronzer, I love me a good cream bronzer. The powder versus cream debate, I know cream is more popular right now. I'm still a powder girl, but I love the way a cream bronzer blends into the skin. So one of the best cream bronzers in my opinion is the Say Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer. So we're going to use this. And I've been using this Morphe E63 brush a lot to blend in my cream products. I feel like I would like a beauty blender to blend this out the most, but I didn't wet my beauty blender. And the Juvia's Place, just the shape of it, isn't great for blending out cream bronzer. So we'll just use this. I don't need too much because I did pull a powder bronzer to set this, which you don't need to do a cream and then powder on top, but I'm being extra because I want to share my favorite products with you guys. But I don't always do this double step route right here. And then get right underneath. Be careful because remember, our foundation is too dark, so we don't really want to darken the look of it too much, but I like a little sculpt down there. And this bronzer just blends into the skin like a dream. I'm gonna use my sponge. I'm gonna press that out. Okay. 
Let's get into the powder side now because that's it for creams. I'm gonna use a few different powders because I love powders, okay? I, I think powder just makes the skin look so smooth. So the best powder that I tried in 2022 was the Jaclyn Cosmetics Power Move Sheer Light Powder. So smoothing on the under eyes. So I'm just gonna put it in the cap. And I've recently adopted the trick of using a powder puff cheap from Amazon. And I'm just gonna get it on the powder puff. Put some on the back of my hands, make sure I don't have too much and just press her in. The shape of this just really gets in there, you know? Honestly, this powder, I think, and this technique is a bit heavy for the Urban Decay Concealer. Using a lighter setting powder with a brush like the Pat McGrath Lab Sublime Perfection Powder, I think is the better option for the Urban Decay Concealer. But I've been loving this powder and this technique, so I had to show you it. But probably if I were doing this off camera, I would be using my Pat McGrath powder to set my under eyes just because it goes better with the heavy concealer. And then I do like to set right here because this is where my pores are. Do you see how like perfect my skin looks? Ew, I just noticed I had crusty lips. When do I not though? Right on the center. Isn't that beautiful? And then I'm going to take some also right underneath to sculpt as well. This is, I feel like, old school back in the day when we all wore super heavy makeup, but I'm, I'm still in that era, you guys. <laughs> I love heavy makeup. To really get into sculpting, love, love, love the Kaleidos Symphony Trio Contour. And this I just love to use kind of as a final touch, a final judgment of how my makeup looks. So I feel like if I want a little bit of brightening, what I'll do is not use that brush. I'm gonna use my refer brush and go into this light shade. And sometimes I'll use this to brighten everything up. See what that did? This powder is so buttery. Or if I want a little bit more depth out here, kind of mix these two colors just right here to really create that cheekbone shadow because these shades are really great for actual contouring and not warming up the face or bronzing. But what I love this trio for the most is a good old nose contour. So I'm gonna use my BK Beauty 211. I like to mix these two shades together and I'm gonna do my best to make a straight line. I feel like my nose can't make a straight line with powder, but I'm doing my best. I just feel like it always looks crooked. Crooked? It always looks crooked. Like you see, it's totally user error, but I do it pretty soft because I know it's not gonna be perfect. And then we're gonna use the white powder. Let's put it down the center. And sometimes I even use my powder puff and kind of go down the sides like this. But that's when I'm really wanting to let sculpt it. It's gotta be a special occasion. Then we're gonna blend it. And then I leave it kind of looking a little harsh like this. You see how kind of harsh that looks? I feel like my nose is so round, it always looks a little weird. So blend the sides. And then the final trick is to use whatever sponge you used for your foundation slash concealer. Just go over top and it will kind of make everything look a little bit more natural. Don't look too hard, it's not perfect. <laughs> and then I did want to share with you a great powder bronzer. I don't necessarily need to use it today, but I'm just going to for the sake of sharing products that I love. This Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer, it's from the drugstore and it is the business. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of this for the sake of the video. Like I do have a lot of products on my face, so normally wouldn't do this, but we'll just do it on the forehead a little bit so you can see how pretty that warmth that I added was. So nice. Before I do blush and highlight, let's finish up the eye look because I want to kind of complete it. So we're going back into our Viseart palette. I think I'm gonna keep it all matte down here, but we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna start off with the lighter shade and I'm gonna run this pretty much along the entire lower lash line. I'm starting the focus in the outer corner and then I'm bringing it in. Then we're gonna add in a little bit more depth. Again, focusing in the outer corner and then with whatever's left, bring it in. Grabbing our dark 
brown. Now this is the one that adds the depth, so I'm being more careful. I'm not going to blend this one in. I'm just going to keep it on the outer third of the lower lash line. I lied. Let's just do a little bit of shimmer. I can't help it. I'm going to start off with this shimmer right here. And I'm just going to put it on the lower lash line in the middle. Are the faces I'm making cute? I feel like they are. <laughs> and then lastly, take this peach shimmer shade. See, I'm putting this just like on the inner third. And this is brightening it up, so I'm glad I did that. Like right down here, I love a bright inner corner. Yeah, I think our eyeshadow is looking great for blush. <sighs> There's a lot of blushes I love, so this was tough. But I'm still on these Pat McGrath Labs blushes. They're just a reliable formula. And let's use Desert Orchid. This is my favorite warm blush. I normally like a very pink cheek, but I'm very picky with orangey kind of warm blushes and this one is the prettiest one ever. So I'm gonna use my BK Beauty A507. Okay, and I find warm blushes don't normally flatter my skin tone, but this one does. So I'm keeping it more towards the back, going more sculpted today, I guess. So just like that. But normally I do like some color right on the apple. And the way that this brush just places the product down is amazing. Then for highlight, you guys are gonna be excited. I'm using the Rare Beauty Highlighter in Exhilarate. These just launched. They are incredible. These and the Charlotte Tilbury ones, phenomenal. I would say though, I found myself using the Rare Beauty one more. So I think this one might be my favorite and you'll see. Take a look at this. Using a BK Beauty 112 brush and I'm just going, oh. Oh, it's so good. It's really, really, oh, that was like more glowy than I wanted it to be, but it's fine. We'll just, we'll blend it out. I meant to go in with a softer hand, but that's fine. It blends out really great and it gives such a pretty glam glow. Is highlight coming back in 2018? I hope so, right? I, I haven't been using highlight as much recently, but I hope it's back because this is a statement, right? Just realize how unblended this was. Give me a moment. I'm also gonna use a small brush. This is a Morphe M213. And I'm gonna use that highlight right in here. And then right here. And then for fun, I don't normally do this, but extra, extra, extra today. Mmm. And because we really laid down a lot of products, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Rare Beauty. Always an Optimist Face Mist. This is really great for just kind of lightening things up, pressing it in, especially if you use a lot of powder. Okay, I'm gonna let that set. And then for eyeliner, I've been loving brown eyeliner. I'm using the Jones Road Beauty, the best pencil in the shade brown this is actually the best pencil our liner today is going to be more on the soft side but that's okay because our lashes are going to bring out the definition but i love this because it feels like it's putting just an eyeshadow on your eyes it's that simple but i'm gonna try and keep the wing like that kind of following my eyeshadow like this and then i'm just gonna smudge it along my lashes like so. Do you see how easy this is going over even the metallic shades? And then I'm gonna tight line as well. So that's the kind of upper waterline. This is gonna make my eyelashes look full. So just like that, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly do this on the other eye. If you haven't tried brown eyeliner yet, you need to. You can see it adds the definition, but it still looks quite natural. And this pencil is where I would start amazing. I've been all about the inner corner wing the last year or so, so I'm gonna have to do an inner corner wing. I'm going to take just this crunchy number 10 angled brush. I'm mixing it in this dark brown and this mid-tone brown because I don't want it to be too dark. And what I do is I start off by using the eyeshadow to fill in the inner corner, kind of going almost on the inside of the eye. And then 
you just wing it out like this. It doesn't need to look perfect because you see how jacked up that looks. But do what you got to do to create a terrible <laughs> triangle. Probably you want to do a better job than me. It's hard to do this on camera, but just like that. Extend. This one is a little better. <laughs> Listen to me, friends, though. There is a method to my badness. I'm going to take this Sydney Grace synthetic brush, get a little bit of concealer on it, and I mean a little bit. You don't want it to be gunky. And then I'm going to use that to just actually give me a good-looking wing. So like this, I went too low, so I'm just going to fill this in. Like you see, it's already coming together. Mascara, I'm using my favorite mascara of 2022. This is a Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. I love this because it gives both length and volume. And for me, it holds a curl. I'm using my Shu Uimura Eyelash Curler real quick. Do you see how the brown really defines the eye, but it's not too much? Love what brown does. Okay, give me a moment. Just so you can see the difference of what this mascara does. Incredible. And then my current favorite lashes right now are the Velour Cloud 9 lashes. So I'm gonna quickly pop these on and we'll be back to finish the lips. We're finally getting close. I talked way too much today. Mm, right? Okay. Now for lips, I wanted a very simple lip. I've been into just a lip liner and then a lip gloss over top. So I'm going to start off with the Patrick Ta Precision Lip Crayon. This is so good, tried and true, very reliable. I'm using the shade Oshi oh, Single. So this just adds a little bit of contour. Then I like to kind of make the lower lip look a little plumper than it actually is. Just like that. And then finally for the glossy product, I'm going to use the very viral Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. Lately, everything I've been trying from Tarte has been so good. Very random. I used to not like their stuff. But lately, they've really stepped it up. This is the shade Peachy Beige. And this has a little bit of coverage on the lips, but it mostly is about the gloss. So I'm just going to pop this on, you see? Beautiful. Wow. Like, that's it. That's the look, and it looks amazing. This is my kind of idea of a go-to makeup look. It's a lot of products. It's not easy, but these are my favorite products. Okay, give me a moment. So, I got a haircut last night, and my hair was so beautiful and blown out, and this is what one walk outside in Miami will do to that blowout. Anyways, <laughs> we're just gonna tuck it behind the ears and pretend it looks good. And here is my go-to makeup look using my absolute go-to products so far in 2023. Of course, I love the way that this look turned out. And again, a huge thank you to Phyla for sponsoring today's video. Remember to use my code MORGAN25 at checkout to save 25% off. Easy three-step skincare routine for my fellow acne-prone friends. I think, you know, my skin's been loving it, obviously. It looks so good right now. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I'll have a link down to everything that I used in today's video in the description box. And make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.